<coughs> so now uh, we pass on to uh, Ivan Mosca uh, from the University of Turin in uh, Italy. Um, I guess you present the title of the talk yourself, maybe. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder that the the uh, the talks, the papers are 20 minutes uh, scheduled for 20 minutes. So I try to give the speakers a little signal about uh, five minutes before, so that there's time for the um, for the discussion. Hi there, or maybe hi here, and hi there also for the online people. Uh, I'm Ivan Mosca, I'm from uh, Turin University, and um, in particular from the Labant Research Center, which is the laboratory of ontology of the University of Turin. And uh, my presentation uh, is Boards, Outer Space, and Freedom in Video Games. So the synopsis. Is, the, uh, is this one. In the historical evolution of the concept of speciality, uh, we can find a social ontological model of speciality related to games. And this model could be also useful in order to better understand uh, a taxonomy of board types in both uh, tabletop and uh, computer games and the conceptualization of the six degree movement in the outer space setting as cons concrete instantiations of the general goal of games, which I think is freedom. Well, let's go. According to Espen Asset, which maybe it will be there tomorrow, uh, the defining element in computer games is speciality. Yes, but why? Neurology and phenomenology uh, has shown us that the human conception of space depends, moreover, on ocular vision and movement. Uh, the movement of things and the movement of the body, of the subject within the things. So video games are a spatially oriented medium because they combine the three main elements of our naive speciality. Visual perception, movement, and interaction. Well, uh, this account uh, is an account of ontology. What is ontology? I think that uh, uh, the game scholar Zagal will define an ontology applied to game studies. According to Zagal, taxonomy organizes games by their elements, uh, whereas ontology organizes the elements of the game itself. And I think that an ontology of games should be a social ontology. Social ontology is the discipline that studies all the things that exist only in as much people believe in them, such as the value of the money, the law of the state, uh, weddings, marriage, and also games, of course, because the meaning of games and the same constitution of games depends on uh, players. So, uh, according to Kripkenstein, which is the <laughs> Uh, Kripke mm, vision, view about uh, uh, Wittgenstein, the only thing that uh, uh, all games share is the subject, is the player that defines them as games. So we have to better understand how the player uh, interacts and uh, constitutes these uh, games. Social ontology defines game as an interactive fiction, fiction as believe, make believe. So for example, we uh, find the f mm, fiction side in Oizinga. According to Oizinga, play is uh, an activity which is separated from the reality by a magic circle, mm, which defines a fiction. And according to Gadamer, uh, play is an, is an oscillatory and free movement in space. And Salen and Zimmerman uh, combined these uh, type of reflections with uh, their definition of play as a free movement within a more rigid structure, the structure uh, being the fictional magic cir circle. So in the, about this uh, definition, the speciality of games is uh, fiction relative. 
relative to the magic circle, and interaction relative, relative to movement. Hmm? So freedom can be achieved by a cognitive uh, tool, the fiction, which enable the, the player to, um, to achieve the freedom by a material movement, the interaction with the system. Movement is really important related to the real-time graphics, as uh, yesterday we talked in the workshop with Rune. If we assign a magic circle to a territory, we constitute a playground where to move freely. Therefore, uh, these uh, uh, playground, uh, these magic circles, uh, are present also in pervasive games like parkour. Mm? For, because in these uh, type of games, uh, the magic circle is a sort of horizon that follows the, uh, the player movement, uh, which is uh, on a concrete and real territory. Well, in general, some games emphasize the fictional aspect of games, and others emphasize the interactive movement. I think that computer games are mainly focused on interactive movement, because uh, they uh, try to link, in, a, in many different ways, uh, the place to the space, and we will see what I, what I intend. Well, in, uh, in order to uh, try to find some uh, interesting, uh, interesting reflections about place and space in games, we need the model of speciality. Uh, we, called, uh, we, we can find it, uh, deduce it from the, the history of the concept of speciality in, uh, in, the, in the history of philosophy, as uh, the first presenter uh, well, uh, well, uh, mm, well has known. But uh, I think that the more important of the ancient philosophers is Aristotle. According to Aristotle, there is no an abstract space, just experienced places. Mm? Well, uh, arriving to the modern uh, view, uh, we have, to, uh, we have the inter intermediate step of Euclid. Mm? According to Euclid, uh, the space is a geometrical and uh, axis rotation of the plane. Uh, with it, which is 3D, infinite, unicorn, continuous, homogeneous. This geometrical space has been adopted as a physical theory by Galilei, Descartes, and Newton, which defined an absolute concept of space. And, uh, but, so as uh, Casey uh, said, from Aristotle to Newton, the place lost out to space. Mm? But, uh, Non-Euclidean geometries and the theory of rel relativity, which applied non-Euclidean geometries to physics, uh, led the uh, philosophers to, uh, like Husserl, for example, or Heidegger, to, to do a revisation of the place as a lived experience. And this, I think, created the feed for the contribute of naive physics, which is the study of the common sense uh, about uh, the concept of space and place and so on. So from the name physics, we can build a social ontological model of speciality, which divides, mainly related to games, which divides the place as a subjective portion of the universe, ex an experienced environment, a territory, which is an objective portion of the universe, a map, which is an objective representation of a single territory with a systematic method. Uh, there are many possible maps for a single territory, clearly. And space as an objective and abstract representation, uh, mainly propositional, of all the territories. So abstract space uh, try to grasp the shared properties of all the spaces. So the subjective imposition of a magic circle to an objective territory constitutes a playground, which is a place. And a gameplay representation of in, game, in gameplay graphics is a subjective experience, gives the possibility to, to make an, a subjective experience to the subject, uh, both in third person, in first person, and for abstract games. There is a, uh, um, a, a focus on the player centrality. Also in the abstract games like uh, Tetris, uh, because uh, um, the player's movement is central in uh, this type of representation of space. But what about, about games like SimCity? 
In this case, uh, uh, things seem a little bit different. Uh, we have to understand better what are game maps. Uh, in gameplay graphics, the place uh, is depicted uh, uh, as the, um, the speciality where the player interacts. Map graphics, instead, are representational, often using a, an Euclidean point of view. According to Wolf, maps are not spaces in and of themselves. They are not places. Mm -hmm. They are not places, but they are on-screen representations of off-screen spaces. For then, a game map is a portion of the playground that represents some or all parts of the playground territory. Normal game maps represent a portion of playground without giving direct access to it. Uh, but there is a particular type of maps that does not represent what is off screen. These maps give instead direct access to the territory they represent with an interactive, with, a, with an interaction, uh, um, offering an interaction to the player. And they are the boards, what I call the boards, like in SimCity, like in um, Ingress, and like in Chess 2. So according to Walls, board is a playground that abstracts all other physical spaces, but it remains, it is still a physical space in itself. In a board, the place of gameplay is constituted by an interactive map which directly allows the interaction. So a board is bought, a map that represents a territory, and a place that constitutes the playground where the player can, uh, can, uh, can make uh, his experiences. Boards are also, are also compatible, with, uh, compatible with avatars, like in uh, Pac-Man. But we will see many different uh, board types. First board type is referential board. In a referential board, the place of gameplay is constituted by a map which represents a territory which is existing outside its representation. And this is the case, for example, for Sim of SimCity, or uh, of Risk. Mm? This is a tabletop game or of Warhammer, another tabletop game. Uh, on the contrary, there are self-referential boards. Here, the map does not represent an external territory, but it uh, is it still a self-representation, like in uh, Pac-Man or in chess. Well, uh, we, na uh, we, we, uh, we uh, have taken into in account the tabletop boards. In here, the player must obey to some rules, for example, in chess. And they are different from the mm, computer boards, because in the computer boards, the player just interacts with material affordances without the possibility of cheating. Uh, like, for example, Jorgensen has written uh, some years uh, ago. And uh, we talked about that in the workshop of yesterday also. Well, then, in computer boards are made by concrete affordances. They are places which involve interaction environments where the player is inserted. On the contrary, in tabletop games, boards are representation of the mind interaction between the players. Uh, uh, for example, uh, mind chess, the chess without uh, chessboard, in, the, in this, uh, in this uh, type of game, uh, the communication of the moves uh, in propositional language uh, uh, can uh, lead us to understand that chessboard is just a sort of uh, a prop for the mind boards of the, uh, of the players involved in the game, like uh, in Walton uh, has written in, uh, in his seminal uh, book of. Therefore, there is a sort of paradox, because in computer games, uh, uh, we, we find uh, analog environments, like in cinema, whereas in tabletop games, we find digital environments, like in literature. Here, I define analog as continuous, as physical, uh, and digital uh, as discrete, as uh, segmented, as uh, related to mind states, intentional states. So a digital board is a play constituted by a map which interaction is governed by discrete states of a propositional mind. Whereas an analog board, like those of computer games, is a place constituted by a map which interaction is governed instead by its material affordances. Well, also computer games, which are not video games, can have boards, because not all computer games are video games, we know. For example, this is uh, the famous challenge between Kasparov and Deep Blue. Deep Blue was not, was a console game, we can say, 
<laughs> but uh, uh, as not a display which uh, um, uh, which uh, which um, involved some affordances uh, that Kasparov could uh, use. Mm? So there are uh, we can see that uh, that there are mind boards mm, uh, related to do all uh, the pre uh, OXO games, uh, the first uh, video game. Uh, for example, the checkers uh, with printed on punch cards, they moves. Mm. And propositional games like Deep Blue or interactive fictions, uh, uh, they, are, uh, they in involve mind boards, we can see. And there are also non-discrete material boards, like in mechanical games of pinball, of tabletop hockey, which is mechanical. So we have many types of boards. Also audio, audio boards, uh, where the playground is defined by noises, like in Dog and Cat, I don't know if you know this audio game, or like in uh, uh, Zombie Run. Uh, in uh, Dog and Cat, we have um, an audio mind board because uh, the player has to build a sort of mind board in order to uh, explore the audio board. And uh, in uh, games like uh, Zombie Run, we have uh, an audio video and also geolocalized board. But this uh, uh, discussion about board types can involve another type of relation between uh, place and space. So, because we have said that uh, board is a syntactic form of, spa of special representation that constitutes an experienced place where, game, where players can, can interact. But also a semantic content can represent an abstract space as an interactive place. And I'm talking about uh, the outer space in six degrees of free freedom, uh, outer space as setting. Outer space, also known as uh, interstellar space, in Western media of 20th century has been the metaphor of the human ability of going beyond the ability, uh, the, the limits. And according to Walls, the outer space is the location of infinity and its allegory too. Uh, it has been the symbol of freedom mm, because of it involves the exploration of new frontiers and uh, uh, also the absence of constraints for physical movement. So uh, we can define it as a sort of synecdoche of the abstract space, uh, uh, the, um, the part of, uh, for the whole. Mm? We, uh, we can find the concept of space uh, directly represented in a single place where the player can interact. So outer space is a sort of delocalized place where space can be experienced as pure movement. Outer space was the normal setting in early video games, in indeed. And the interaction, I think, because I, I think that interaction amplifies the experience of movement, which is in inherent to every representation of outer space, also like uh, those of cinema or of uh, literature. But interaction amplifies. So the uh, outer space uh, uh, has been also the image for future until, until we reach the moon, in the, that, uh, which was an event that uh, coincided with the advent of market computers and mainly console games uh, at this epoch. So video games inherited the outer space as an image of the future, as uh, represented computers, uh, and represented with the computers as the new image of future. Also, the evolution of graphics emphasized the roles of the computer as an image of future, often which, uh, with the benchmark of outer sp space setting, for example, because above all, the evolution of the possibility to carry on a free cardinality uh, of the player movement. Uh, this is also uh, from Zagal. From uh, the two degree of freedom of space invaders, uh, to the sixth degree of freedom of elite, uh, 84 elite, 1984. When we reach a fluid movement in sixth degree of freedom uh, at the start of the 90s, outer space almost disappeared from the titles. Uh, really, <laughs> almost. Not, not completely, but almost. And the innovation of spatial representation moved uh, to the variation of real spatial coordinates, uh, for example, in a um, portal or fats, this is really clear. 
And the same occurred in painting after the introduction of photography, like uh, the, the avant-garde widespread as a, uh, has been in the 19th century. Well, we arrive to freedom, the last topic. Free movement in a, rigid, in a more rigid structure, we said, is computer game. Uh, this free movement in a more rigid, rigid structure uh, well expressed, I think, the dialectics of place and space in computer games. Place as environment experienced from the point of view of the subject, and space as objective and abstract representation of all places. Uh, the movement is both here an experience of freedom, so a subjective place which depicts an objective space. And the outer space setting, with new frontiers, with, as a major future, uh, in a six-axis uh, movement, with, without constraints, emphasizes this experience of, move, of free movement. So in video games, the abstract space is simulated just to be experienced as a place. And uh, also according to Nietzsche, the ludic simulations are fictional, so they are not focused on the reproduction of an objective reality, the space, but they are more fo focused on the subjective perception of what is real, eh? a place. So uh, in this sense, a space is an ontological uh, simulation of reality, like in the games of like Falcon 3.0, and place is an epistemological reproduction, uh, reproduction of perception, like in games uh, like, like uh, Rebel Assault. And we can see also the different uh, level of uh, selling about that. Well, this is the end, because from the ontological freedom, the movement in six degree, uh, we, uh, when we arrive to this uh, possibility of the ontological freedom, Games uh, started to explore a social ontological freedom related to choices, uh, which generated the sandbox genre, and uh, uh, which not, 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 well, not generated, but which um, evolved this type of uh, genre, uh, leading uh, to be the main genre of uh, modern video games, of current modern video games. So thank you, and uh, I'm here for... Um, okay, that was uh, a dense and, <laughs> and very wide-reaching uh, wide talk. Uh, I was wondering, are there any questions to that? Uh, any comments, questions? <laughs> Stefan, and then... <laughs> Sorry, just uh, shortly. Okay, no, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel, thank you. Uh, I feel obviously cha challenged by your idea to really defend the Aristotelian uh, notion uh, of space and, and reintroduce it. Um, so, and I understood it trying to do it with, uh, I also like this playground model, say this is like the space would be the representation of what is actually carried out uh, in the place. But um, I think there is a sort of uh, bug in your interpretation, okay. and this is uh, maybe it's a failure. And this is <laughs> and this is coming in with uh, Wolf, because mm -hmm. I think this is a mis he's a mi he's doing a misreading of SimCity. Um, same does McLawsage. They take this what we see on the screen or as a map, and yep. you say it's like an on-screen representation of an off-screen space, which would be the place. Yeah. But uh, when you interact with that, what you call a map, you see suddenly there is another map popping up, which shows you where you are exactly on the full territory. So what well, you have here... What is your view of the full territory? Yeah. yeah. So what you have there on the screen is actually is your place. So at least you would have to admit that space is a place in this case. So uh, I think uh, SimCity is already an example for transgressing this primacy of the place, but that would be just Sorry, you, my you say you, Well, thank you for the for the question. Uh, so you say that uh, when in SimCity, we can take maybe the image. When in SimCity, we uh, well, when in SimCity, here, the first the first image. When in SimCity, we uh, we use the map hmm, of the map. Uh, we are uh, leaving a place uh, 
for another type of place. Maybe it's a meta board in that case, but I'm not so sure because I don't remember this uh, about the first same city, for example. Because no, the normal view, I think, is a board because it's both a map which represents a place and, and also a place with, uh, to, uh, which involves uh, interaction. But the representation of this map, this is your uh, uh, question, I don't remember if it's interactive. So if it's interactive, we, could, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, define it as a meta board. If it is not, uh, it's just a map. A map of a board. No. <laughs> no? Okay. We'll discuss it later. Go okay. Um, I get a question that is not directly related, I feel, to um, the issues with place and space, but still somehow connected. You talked about freedom a lot. And yeah, just yeah, at the yeah. very beginning of your talk, you said that yeah. for you, freedom is the goal of yeah. games and play. Yeah. Could you just elaborate why? on that a bit? I mean, <laughs> why, why, why do you think freedom is the goal of play? This is a bit of Euclidean statement, I know. <laughs> freedom is the goal of the game. Yes, I understand what you say. Um, well... I, I started from a definition of Gadamer, mm? and also not of from Gadamer, but also from many games, modern game scholars. Uh, according to modern uh, many modern game scholars, freedom is the main goal mm? and ma mm, of video of of, j of games in general, but overall is the main focus of games. Uh, for example. Uh, in computer games, uh, the freedom of the movement mm, in the early computer games, the freedom of the movement of your avatar uh, was the main interesting point mm, which attracted the, the, big, uh, the big market. Because people could interact with this represent visual representation by moving they, uh, their avatar directly and this was perceived as freedom mm? Uh, mm, freedom I, can i is it an answer this one or maybe not <laughs> maybe you can can you be more precise in, in the in the, in the uh, question um, i'm just wondering with what i mean what kind of freedom are you talking about is it just freedom of spatial movement or is it like freedom of choice. action choice whatever uh, yeah. well, the freedom as uh, Absence of constraints. Hmm? Absence, absence of constraints. Uh, well, this is uh, related to the fact that games are representations in, uh, which involves an interaction. Hmm? Uh, firstly, uh, we, this is the, the feature of the games that attract people that, are, um, that have the normal habit of uh, using uh, non-interactive representations, but in general, also uh, psychological uh, studies about the development of the child uh, link uh, ma many, like for example, Vygotsky or uh, Piaget or uh, Winnicott or uh, um, many others, they link the uh, race of the game as a, of the play attitude in a little child to the possibility of uh, enacting something that in reality is not possible to enact. So games, because of the magic circle, which creates a fiction, give the possibility to do something that in reality you cannot. This is the main point of games. Not only for me, I think. <laughs> I, I happen to disagree, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay, we can take one very quick. I'm uh, with him on this. So I'm, I'm a little uh, confused about this notion of freedom because I think you're working with two different notions of freedom because I think often freedom of motion is not the same as freedom of choice. So for example, Clearly. if I'm in an empty field, I have total freedom of motion. If there's a house in the field, I have less freedom of motion, but I have more choices. I can be yeah. inside or outside, yeah. private or public. No, clearly. Well, uh, free movement could be also understood as a sort of <laughs> meta synecdoche of the general freedom. Mm? As, we, as, we, as we define freedom as the, of the possibility to act without constraints, and uh, fic a fictional environment made by, constituted by a, a magic circle, uh, 
um, uh, gives this uh, possibility, then the free movement is just a sort of <laughs> interactive representation, mm, a sort of synecdoche of the general freedom of, uh, of uh, acting as you, as you like, as you, as you desire. Mm. Okay, I think, I think we're finished. I remember Bob Dylan also said that freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. <laughs> 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 okay, so now we take a break. I think uh, that's true, no? Uh, lunch. Uh, Thank so. you.